Hello, I'm Michael Coles. I'm an Atlanta entrepreneur, co-founder of the Great American Cookie Company and many other endeavors. And I'm here today to talk with Martin Emmets, who I got to know about a year ago and uh, who had his a very exciting a car wash business called Dirty Dog Car Wash. And I'm so excited to be able to bring his story uh, to you. Martin and I, as I said, met about a year ago. And uh, today we work together. I'm fortunate to be on his board and be able to be with him through this expansion of his business. So, Martin, you want to tell the folks a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get to the heart of the questions. Yeah, sure. Um, native Atlanta, uh, which makes me a unicorn in its own right. Uh, not too many of those walking around the streets of Atlanta. Um, went to school at Howard University and then off to law school at Sanford University. Um, a recovering lawyer uh, in the, I'd say, the seventh step of ten. At this point, um, proud to be on the other side. Uh, very happy to be on the entrepreneurial side, um, and to have uh, met you. And we are very rapidly in growth mode here at Dirty Dots, and uh, very much looking forward to answering some questions. Well, that that was a perfect segue, Martin, into our first question, which is: being a recovering lawyer, what? What made you decide to be into the and be in the car wash business of all things? So I go back to um, my first week in law school, which is actually probably the third day of law school, uh, and I can remember it almost vividly. Even still today, I tell the story often when I'm asked this question. Um, I had gone through the first subject matter, and I had three more to kind of brief and read. And the first week of law school, they kind of give you your, your reading syllabus and um, it kind of charts out how many pages you have to read. And with that, I, I, after going through the first one, I was, you know, it was 10.30, 10.45 at night, three more to go. And I realized I have 285 more pages to go. Um, in that moment, honestly, I said to myself, this is, this is not what, this is not how they play lawyers on TV. Um, and, uh, I, I didn't want to do it. But, you know, at that moment, everyone, I think, um, in law school, you hit that wall really quickly. Um, and you just have to power through. But for the next three years, I realized that I didn't love the law. Um, I didn't have the passion that um, a lot of other people did in terms of wanting to kind of move up the food chain and uh, eat what you kill in the law in the legal environment. Um, so I kind of always knew I wanted to do something more entrepreneurial. I came from an entrepreneurial uh, family. My dad owned a, a caramel corn popcorn store in Green Bar Mall when I was a kid. So it's kind of in my DNA and blood. Um, so moving forward, we were originally um, looking for all types of entrepreneurial things. I mean, we ran the gamut with QSRs uh, from you know Subway to IHOP to various various things, and couldn't find anything. And I kind of just fell into car washing uh, by accident one day, getting my car wash at the local um, car wash uh, in Midtown. And, and uh, how long did it take? Did you? Did you immediately open up your own car wash or did you kind of get your feet wet? No, no pun intended. Uh, did you kind of get your feet wet somewhere else and then um, move out onto your own brand? Yep. So we opened up as um, franchisees of a kind of a, a smaller outfit here that was based out of um, the Southeast. Um, we were franchisees and, you know, the, the relationship kind of grew stale very quickly. Um, and with that, we were fortunate enough to sell that very first franchise location. Um, and we knew we wanted to stay in the business. Um, and then from there, kind of Dirty Dogs was, was born. Uh, but it was because of that kind of toxic relationship we originally experienced was kind of the catalyst for kind of wanting to go off on its own. It's a pretty similar story when you think about it. Um, both entrepreneurs start doing something and um, run into some sort of roadblock, and then they find their way and their pathway on their own. You know, one of the things that uh, I found so interesting when you and I met is how many things we, sh some of the values uh, that we shared, including uh, making sure that 
details that no detail was really overlooked. And where did you get that experience of, uh, did that come out of studying the law? No, actually, you know where it came from? Um, being in the previous franchise system where details were really ignored um, and they're cast aside and, um, you know, any type of innovation or any type of forward thinking was uh, frowned upon. So when I had the opportunity to do it sort of my way, if you will, um, I took every opportunity to think like a consumer. Um, and that's one of the things a lot of operators don't do. Um, and coming from a background where I wasn't kind of institutionalized as a kind of car wash operator, I was really a consumer in my former life of one. Um, I knew what I liked and I knew what I didn't like and I knew what people were missing. Um, and I just um, went on a rampage to make sure that we included every bell and whistle and didn't think or forget any small thing that the customer may want, um, either present or in the future. Well, you know, uh, one other thing that we share, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people call it corporate citizenship. Some companies do it because they feel obligated to do it. But you and I share a value of feeling an obligation to give back for kind of the success we've been so fortunate to have. I mean, I know I, I'm asking this question almost redundantly, but I know... I know you don't do this to see what you can get out of it. Why don't you just talk a little bit about why you feel a commitment to give back to the community? Because I'm talking about the 10,000 car washes you gave away, uh, you know, to uh, ac uh, across your car washes uh, to people who are basically that take care of us. Yeah. And, and if we can, you can indulge me or I'm going to go back to the beginning and how it all started. Um, we started Dirty Dogs. We were literally all about uh, hours away from opening up our first store. We were getting the traffic signal installed right up front in front of our first store in Calhoun. And there was a local uh, police officer there with a buddy that was running traffic as they installed the new light signal at that point. Um, and their cars were filthy. I mean, filthy. Uh, but like they hadn't been washed and probably... Eight months, I'm being generous, was probably more like two years. Um, and I said to the guys, I said, um, why don't you bring your cars through? And they both looked at each other and looked back at me and they said, really? And I said, yeah. And they said, well, do we need to have a contract or do we need to pay? I said, no, we're going to do it for free. It's, you guys are here helping us out. And um, uh, uh, they ran the cars through. They got out. And to see the smile on these guys' faces of having a, a clean squad car, um, it was almost worth its weight in gold. And from there, I said, look, tell everybody else if they want to wash their cars, come on by. We'll wash them for free. And from that, what we call now the Helping Heroes program was born. Um, and we initiated that program of giving back 10% to first responders, um, which we have now expanded. Originally, it was police, fire, EMS. Now we go back and we've expanded this pool to include teachers and um, uh, animal shelter workers and staff. Uh, so that's the giving back that is now part of our DNA. A lot of companies got involved in giving back uh, during the pandemic in 2020, um, for lack of a better term, because it became sexy to do so. We were doing it when it wasn't. We were doing it because it just was a part of our corporate DNA and we felt it was the right thing to do. Um, and I'm really proud of the fact that we've expanded our reach into, you know, teachers and, and animal shelters, uh, because, you know, obviously, as you can see, we have a nice cute Dalmatian as our logo, Rescue is his name. Uh, so all these things now are the catalyst for the growth of the Helping Heroes program. That's great. You know, uh, my wife, Donna, and I, we travel across the country by car a lot. We've been doing it really for years and years and years. And there's so many car washes out there today. Uh, I have to say that for the majority of them, we don't get a very good job. I know that's one of the reasons I want to see a dirty dog everywhere so I can make sure I get a clean car when we have to stop. From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> so let me ask you this. How do you continue to keep yourself relevant with all this competition? Because there are car washes springing up almost every single day. How do you differentiate yourself and, and keep yourself, you know, kind of ahead of the pack? 
Well, one of the things I think we, we start with is making sure that we are, um, you know, you, you see it on my chest here, first in service, first in community. Um, and it's an important mission statement for us uh, because it allows us to kind of plow forward um, in everything that we do, kind of 360. Um, you, you've heard me say this ad nauseum, you know, car washing is easy. It's soap and water. It really is. Uh, but it's the little things, going back to your question about the details, that are differ, different, differentiating factors for us. Um, we put a lot of emphasis on the aesthetics of our building. Um, it's not just a long cylindrical box. Um, we want it to be aesthetically pleasing. Um, we, we go out of our way to make sure that we have every creature comfort uh, that comes out. As soon as it comes out, we are eager to beta test anything from a technological standpoint that advances us and kind of gets us the advantage of being um, first, in, first in, in, in the field with some things like that. Yeah, it's great. Uh, what, you've announced that, uh, and I guess this really would go to the heart of how you keep that identity as you go forward. You've talked about the fact you're going to open uh, 25 new car washes in the next, uh, I guess, 36 months. And how, how do you think you're going to be able to, well, first of all, how are you going to expand like that? And also, but how do you keep that customer focus with that kind of rate of growth? Well, we, we concentrate on growing particularly our own staff um, in mentoring these folks and making sure that we have individuals who want to grow uh, with us. Um, you know, we've been very fortunate that we've got a, a, a great equity partner in Sinusure Group out of Salt Lake City. Um, they provided us with a lot of, um, you know, great alignment um, and the opportunity to kind of really uh, take this business and take it from kind of a mom and pop where it was just kind of me being quarterback, wide receiver, coach, and owner all at the same time, where I don't have to do all those things now. Um, so that's the easiest thing is allowing my brain to kind of focus on um, the things that I do well and bringing on these other people who have skill sets that ultimately uh, are better than me. Um, and I, I, I pride myself on bringing on smarter people um, and allowing them to, to do what they do. That's great. And, and I know one of the things that's been impressive is your uh, retention of uh, people that work within the company. So I know that mentorship is obviously an important part of your business. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we are. Um, that's one of the good things about being a smaller company. Um, everyone has my number. Uh, anyone can call me at any single time and we can discuss any type of issue. And having that lack of a, what I call kind of a vertical uh, shield or glass uh, is, has been really advantageous for us in keeping a lot of our homegrown talent. Um, in the industry, there's a lot of what I call retreads, uh, folks who have worked at several different car washes. And with that comes a whole lot of several different car wash bad uh, 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 actions and, and bad habits. Uh, we've been able to grow our own talent. A lot, of, a lot of our folks started with us from our very first car wash and um, have opened up other car washes with us. Now, now as we begin to kind of scale, we now have a pipeline for their own individual growth, and they see it. Um, and I'm not um, naive to think that some of the larger operators can't come in and offer some of these folks uh, large sums of money to leave because we spend a lot of money on training and customer service. Um, but we retain them because they know that if they ever need to get to me or anybody else who's in upper management, it's we're only a phone call away. Um, every weekend I make my rounds and I check all the stores. And that's something that's unheard of in some of these larger platforms. Um, so I think it goes a long way with the rank and file that they see that, hey, I'm, I'm there with them on Saturdays and Sundays. I'm not taking the day off sitting by the pool. And uh, one other thing. So one of the things that's been very impressive uh, for me in, in when I was even when I first met you in watching uh, how your car wash operated and that there, in fact, was that uh, touch with customers uh, that was very different than most 
type of car washes like yours that are automatic? I mean, obviously, a full service car wash has a lot of interaction with customers, but most of the full, most of the kind of drive through ones, there's no interaction at all. And I think that has been a really important for your success. Sure. But, you know, uh, going forward, how, how do you think about staying relevant, you know, in innovation and uh, in both with technology and just that personal interface. How do you, how do you think about that going forward? Well, it's, um, it's, it's something that we all are in a world now where um, we're kind of in this middle ground of, um, I think COVID made the world kind of pivot and particularly the retail sector uh, from a very intensive in your face uh, area of customer service to more of one of how do we touch our consumer in different ways. Um, and that's something that we had to also pivot with as well. Um, but finding ways of interacting with our customers, we're, we're really pushing um, use of apps. We're really pushing uh, use of digital social media to kind of use that as a construct uh, to continue to talk to, with, with our customers. Um, and also just staying on top of um anything new that's coming out in the industry or finding new ideas that may fit other retail platforms like a QSR user and reincorporating those for the car wash use. Um, there's a lot of nexus between uh, the QSRs and, and car washes, very similar. Um, other than the human preparation of food, we're still providing really a service and a product at the end of the day. So that's one of the things that we do internally um, is trying to find these nexus from good QSR users um, like Caribou from your old days and Starbucks and Chick-fil-A is another one that's homegrown here. Um, trying to find those ideas, to kind of pivot them to our sector. Yeah, you know, I love hearing that because I know you've heard me say this before that there's nothing harder on your laurels than resting on them, right? It's uh, you got to always kind of stay ahead of the game. That's right. So I guess I guess last question I have for you would be: Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you'd like to share with the audience that's out there today? Because I'm sure people are eager to hear uh, every bit of knowledge that they can get. Uh, you know, I I think um, it's this is an industry that um, has garnered a lot of attention in the past couple of years. Um, and there's been kind of a divide uh, between the traditional car wash user and the new car wash user uh, post-equity and post-VC. Um, you know, I'm really excited to see the industry really kind of reinvent itself uh, under a more formal setting. Um, and being kind of a recovered lawyer, that's kind of more in, in my speed. Uh, so I'm really excited to see um, the, the, the kind of gravitation that is happening within the industry. Um, and then also, I think we're really happy here at Dirty Dots. I think we've got a really good product. Um, again, our commitment to community and service, um, it, it speaks for itself. Um, and we're really excited about everything that we do and the partnerships that we have going forward. Well, that's great, Martin. Thank you. And I, and I know that it certainly gave a lot of insight to servant leadership, which I know you believe in uh, very well. And so with that, I just say thanks for sitting down and talking with us. I want to thank the audience for being a part of this. And with that, I uh, hope everybody has a great day today. Thank you. Appreciate it.